Hello everyone, this is Minister Chandra at Facebook Shine at T-N-O-W-F, standing for the now factor. Whatever you're going to do for Christ, do it now. I'm hoping everyone is blessed on this Tuesday evening. Thankful for just life, health, and strength. Thank God for just keeping us, um, you know, through this, again, pandemic that we're going through, through the uh, racist chaos that we're going through. We are totally grateful. No matter what's going on, we still going to give God the praise because he is still on the throne. So to him be all glory, honor, and praise because in his word he says, in all things, give thanks, glory to God. And we are grateful. We're not, we don't have a complaint in our, in our minds coming out of our mouths. Glory to God. But all we have is a thank you. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Because it could have been worse, but we tell him, thank you. We want to start off with a praise. Glory to God. When the praises go up, which we all might have heard, those blessings will come down. Glory to God. Whatever that we need, if we need peace, it's coming down when you bless them. Whatever that we need, if it's finances, it's coming down when you bless them. When you be obedient to him and bless his name. Blessings will come down. Glory to God. I'm a true and a living witness. Glory to God. Hallelujah. If we're going to worship him, we have to worship him in spirit and in truth. And we thank him. Glory to God. I'm excited. I don't know about you, but God is doing some miraculous things. Glory to God. And I want you to praise God with me. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We want to just start off with prayer, thanking him for just continually to be with us. He said he'll be with us to the end of the world. So for that, we are not alone. Glory to God. Somebody out there might feel alone today, but I'm letting you know that you are not alone. God is with you. Glory to God. He will be with us to the end of this world. He said he never leave us and he never forsake us. So that's why we know, glory to God, that he will bring us out. Glory to God. And he will bring us to an expected end. Because why? He said it. Glory to God in his word. And he is not a liar. Glory to God. Hallelujah. His word will not come back void. But it will perform the duty that it was meant to perform. So, Heavenly Father, we come before you humble. We come before you sincere. We come with a heart of gratitude and a heart of thanksgiving. We come to praise you and give you thanks because you are God. Hallelujah. Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, Lord of Lord, Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Glory to God. And no matter what we do, Glory to God. And no matter what's going on, we give you praise. Hallelujah. We thank you for being with us, never forsaking us, being with us to the end of this world. So, Father God, as we go into glory to God, fellowship, glory to God, hallelujah, we ask that you be with us and allow somebody that might be listening in and glory to God, listening to my voice, glory to God, and watching me today, let the word, glory to God, go out and let it fill their temple, glory to God, let it go out into the atmosphere, glory to God, and whoever that's in need of what you want to say today and whatever that you want to do today, we give you full authority, glory to God, and permission to move move not by power not by might but by your spirit in jesus most holy name glory to god hallelujah glory to god i've been with you glory to god for over a month or so sharing with you snippets from my book redemption talking about glory to god freedom in christ glory to god whom the son set free is free indeed glory to god i went through a wilderness experience glory to god some years ago Glory to God, where the enemy came in, glory to God, like a flood. But God held up a standard against him and told the enemy, no, glory to God. And for that, I'm grateful. He made a way for my escape through my wilderness experience. And for that, I am grateful. So I'm here, glory to God, to continue to share that testimony with you. I'm actually at the end, glory to God, of this book. Glory to God, and I'll be moving on to the next. But I am here with you, just basically want to talk about let the redeem of the Lord say so. Because after you go through, glory to God, and after I went through, glory to God, the spirit of bondage, where the enemy tried to bind me up. Then I went through, glory to, came to, rather, the spirit of redemption, where he freed me. God himself freed me. Glory to God. And for that, I'm grateful. So now, glory to God, after you go through, you have to say something. 
Glory to God. You have to do a work. You have to perform a duty. Glory to God. Because God kept you. He kept me. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And at the end of my journey, of my wilderness experience, he told me there is a work that you must do. Now, glory to God, that you have been delivered and set free. Glory to God. I am ready to use you for my glory. Hallelujah. So, yes, I have something to say. And you should have something to say as well. That's what my shine page is all about. The now factor. T-N-O-W-F. Whatever you going to do for Christ, do it now. Whatever I, glory to God, will do for Christ, I'm doing it now, right now. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So let the redeemer of the Lord say so. I'm saying so. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I'm saying that I have victory. Glory to God over situations, over circumstance. I have victory over the enemy. Glory to God. He's, he doesn't have the last say-so. He didn't have the last say-so. Glory to God. When I went through my wilderness experience, God had the last say-so. And that's why I'm here today praising him with you. Glory to God. Encouraging you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Letting you know if you and your wilderness experience right now, going through any trial, temptation, tests, I am a witness to tell you God shall, he will bring you out. Glory to God. And he gave me Psalms 107 and verse 2. Glory to God. This is, has truly been a journey. Glory to God. Walking through struggle to triumph. That's just what my wilderness experience was. I walked through struggle. Glory to God. Through triumph. Glory to God. You can't win until you have lost. Glory to God. Really, you can't win until you have lost. And when you have lost something, glory to God, with all the power and the might within you, glory to God, all the strength that God has given you, he will allow you to win. Glory to God, with the obedient spirit, that's what we, glory to God, hallelujah, review the last time I was with you, with the willing and obedient spirit, you shall and you will win. No matter what, no matter what that situation may look like. It may be dark right now, but how many of you know the sun is shining bright? Glory to God. Shine. Let your light so shine so men may see your good works and glorify who? Your Father in heaven. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So I'm glorifying my God that's in heaven right now because why? I went through the struggle and now I have the victory. Glory to God. Before a race begins, you must prepare to win. Glory to God. Before a race, you, before that race, you must prepare to win. Somebody out there, God is, God is giving you the opportunity right now to, to make preparation to win the battle that you're going through. To win the battle that you might not see now, but what's coming. Glory to God. Like I said at the beginning, we're in the, we're in the, uh, in the middle of a pandemic. And then we're also in the middle of a, of a, of a, of a, um, a race, chaos chaotic, you know, uh, situation. You see it every day. You watch the news. Glory to God. But again, God is still on the throne and he is preparing us now to win. That's why in this pandemic, it's, it's not time for us to, to sit down and, and, and lose hope and, and be discouraged, you know, for any reason. Glory to God. The word of God say, trust in the Lord with all of thy heart and lean not to your own understanding and all your ways acknowledge him. He'll direct your path. Glory to God. So we must be prepared to win. Hallelujah. I believe that God right now is in the midst of our struggle as a global nation and as a global world. He's in the midst of it right now and giving us all the tools that we need to win. We just got to hold on. We got to grab a hold to him. Glory to God. And we have to believe and trust that we'll make it out if we just hold on to him. Glory to God. We must be on the mark. I like this. We're talking about a race. Be on the mark. You must be ready. You must be set. And then you must go. Be on the mark. What position are you in right now? Have you placed your position for destiny and purpose. Glory to God. Are you ready to accept the things that God has put on your plate? That's put in your heart? That's put a burden on you? Are you ready for that? I've, I've shared with you before. It's in the book of Matthew. Matthew 11 and starting at the 28th verse. He said, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. 
Learn of me. Glory to God. Hallelujah. If we learn the things of God, we 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 all we are we already won. We won before we even got in the got in the ring. You you hear what I'm saying? It, it, it's a th this battle is not ours. It belongs to Him. Glory to God. And if we be obedient to God, Hallelujah, submit to God and resist the devil, He'll flee. He got to. Glory to God because there's power. Glory to God. Within us, the power that God would put within us, as the word talks about it, greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. So again, be on the mark. Find your position. Be ready. Set. Be in motion. Be prepared to run. And then you go. Glory to God. I may not be the only one who have failed. To hear the voice of the Lord and walk in my own will. So what do, am I doing? I'm encouraging you today to get up and run this race. What? With patience. Hallelujah. You can find that in Hebrews 12 verse 1 through 3. And I'll share that with you today. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. Let us lay aside every weight. Now, remember, we've been talking about holding on stuff and things, people, glory to God, that causes you to be stagnant at the promise of God, to cause you, glory to God, to be, you know, to, to delay your destiny and delay your, your, your purpose that God has set before you. Lay aside that weight. It's a weight. It's too heavy. You can't carry that into your new beginning. Hallelujah. You can't carry that in your new season. You got to let it go. Yes. Let it go. And the sin which doeth so easily beset you. Remember, sin is just uh, disobedience to God. Going against what he's established, what he has set up, his laws, his statutes, his judgments. Being against that. Rejecting, you know what I mean, his commands. Sin. Lay all that aside. Don't worry about what you did yesterday. Glory to God. Remember, he's a rewarder to those who diligently seek him. If you confess your faults, your sins to him, remember, he's faithful and just to forgive you. And therefore, you can move on into your next. Glory to God. All he needs is a yes. So yes, lay us, uh, let us lay aside that weight, as I was saying, that sin, as I was saying, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us and doing what looking to Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. It begins with him and it ends with him. And remember I shared with you lastly that he said in his word, all we need is a little bitty size of a mustard seed of faith. And he'll take you from faith to faith and glory to glory. Ain't that exciting? You don't have to worry about starting big. Some of us out there, we say, well, God, I, I might know what my purpose and my destiny is, but maybe I don't have the finances. Maybe I don't have the people to work with. Lay it aside. That's a weight. Trust God. Believe only in him. And he'll bring it to pass. Whatever your it is that you need for him to bring to pass, he'll do it for you. He'll do it. He want to do it for you. And also it says, for the joy that was set before him endureth the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the, thorn, of the throne of God. The joy that was set before him. It was joy for Jesus to die on the cross. Why? So we can have a chance. When I went through my wilderness experience, glory to God. It was because the cross, it was because the crucifixion, it was because of the blood of Jesus that allowed me to make that way of, of that, of, you know, uh, my escape. He gave me the way of the escape. I took it and I ran with it. After I went through, after I found out that, that what I was going through, it wasn't for me. It wasn't the will of God at all, but I have to find that out. I have to go through that process, that process of redemption. Glory to God. And let me just ask to, for someone to understand. 
You don't just go through a process of redemption once. See, somebody might be saying, okay, well, when you receive Christ as your personal savior, that's it. You don't have to go through nothing else. But how many of you know? If you don't, I am encouraging you today by letting you know so you can be aware that it doesn't end there. There's going to come a trial. There's, there's going to come a, a temptation. There's, there's going to come a, a test that you have to endure and go through in order to get to the other side, in order to get to your next. My God. Hallelujah. Endurance. A lot of times we go through things and we, 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 want, we want to just give up and not go through. But how many of you know you can't give up? Don't give up on yourself. And do not give up on, on God because God will not give up on you. He's able. That's what a songwriter say. He's able. Don't give up on God because he won't give up on you. He's able. That, that could be another reason for you to be obedient to, to the call. That, that, that could be another reason for you to be obedient to destiny and to purpose. Because why? He's not giving up on you. God didn't give up on me when I was going through my wilderness experience. He knew that there was a next for me. Glory to God. And for that, I'm grateful. Hallelujah. For consider him. That's what it also says in Hebrews 12, 1 through 3. For consider him that endures such contradiction of sinners against himself. Consider what Christ went through. So what am I saying? No matter what you're going through, he's able to bring you out. Lest ye be weary and faint in your minds. Huh. Now see, somebody might not want to hear what I got to say. But how many of you know I fainted? I got weary when I was in my wilderness experience. Yes. That's truth. Glory to God. I got weary in my, in, in my wilderness experience. Because what? I thought God didn't hear me. I thought God, hallelujah, wasn't there when he was there all the time. Waiting on me to surrender it all. Hallelujah. So again, we must surrender it all. I bring that to your attention again. Not surrender one thing, but surrender all. Glory to God. And considering what Jesus went through, there's nothing greater or no one greater than he is. Hallelujah. That was the ultimate sacrifice what Jesus went through. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And he just wants to encourage us and, and let us know that no matter what it may look like, go through and come out. Because why? Testing trials, it comes to make us strong. And I am stronger than I ever been because why of my wilderness experience. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It is through this process. What are we talking about? Redemption, the redemption process that we not only but free, but free indeed. And the redeemed can say so. Yeah, that's where we at. Remember at the end of, of the redemption uh, book. That God gave me to write and to share with you today. Let the redeem of the Lord say so. Now I'm able to say something before, before, you know, before God. He said, come boldly to the throne of grace. I can come boldly and pray with you. Intercede for you. Because why? He took me through it. He allowed me to go through that thing for somebody else to have a chance. For somebody else to say, God, if she, if she went through it, if you brought her out, you can bring me out as well. Hallelujah. Because I sense in my spirit, some of us think we have done so much wrong that there is not a chance for us. But that's a liar. Don't let the enemy deceive you. Glory to God. He's well able. Psalms 107 and 2. It says, let the redeemer of the Lord say so. Whom he hath redeemed from the hand of the enemy. I know a lot of you have been, been hearing me, those who have been with me, those who have been, he been hearing. And even if you, you know, drop on my page and, 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 and you actually review it, you know, when I'm not screen, you know, uh, streaming live. But you heard me plenty of times say that, that God redeemed me from the hand of the enemy. That's Psalms 107 and 2. Saying, huh, uh, saying so means, this is what so means. Let me just share that with you. 
It means you give voice to the thanksgiving of freedom in Christ. Glory to God. That's, that's, that's why I'm so excited. Because I have a voice. I'm able to say so. Glory to God. I'm able to give thanks to God for what he's done for me. Hallelujah. I'm, I'm able to, to, to allow my light to shine. Remember shine? The now factor? Whatever you going to do for Christ, do it now. I'm, I'm shining right before the enemy's eyes. Glory to God. Hallelujah. God proved him that he was a liar. Glory to God. And he is defeated today. Why? Because I'm alive and well and walking in my destiny and I'm walking in my purpose. I'm claiming that. You ought to claim it today. Whatever that the enemy have told you, you cannot, you know, uh, you know, receive whatever he had whispered in your ear to say, you can't do that. You can't have that. He's a liar. Hallelujah. He's a liar. And I love the way um, I looked up the word redeem. And I just want to share that with you. It, 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 just a few of, of several meanings to share. It means atone or make amends for sin. Error or evil. Redeem, atone or make amends for sin, error or evil. Glory to God. When I was in my witness experience, I was in error. Yes, I was in error. And when I say God redeemed me from the hands of the enemy, glory to God, he made amends. He, he atoned. Jesus' blood atoned for me. To give me another chance. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And I'm here to tell you, God has given you another chance. Don't worry about it, what you've done. God has given you another chance today. Glory to God. Just turn away and don't look back. God is giving you another chance. He's giving you a second win. He want to blow on you today. Glory to God. He want to just blow on you. Hallelujah. When he blows on you, glory to God, it says in the book of, of Genesis, glory to God, that, that God breathed. He blew his breath in the nostrils of man and gave him life. God want to give you life today and life it, it more abundantly. Hallelujah. It also means gain or regain possession of something in exchange for payment. Mm. gain or regain possession of something in exchange for payment hmm. I hear territory glory to God God want to give you back your territory God want to put you back in position where you thought you lost but he want to put you back in position there's hope for you today there's hope yes you, God won't allow you to regain some stuff that you lost. I hear the book of Joel talking. Hallelujah. Joel, the second chapter, right about the 25th verse. Hallelujah. What the caterpillar, the locust, and the canker worm have eaten up, God is ready to give it back to you. God won't allow you to regain it. Glory to God. I'm excited about that. I'm excited for you because God is giving it back to you. Hallelujah. <laughs> repay at the maturity date remember if, if, if some of you uh, was listening to me some, some you know some segments uh, ago I talked about Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes the third chapter it talks about there is a time and a purpose and a season for everything there is a set time for your breakthrough glory to God that's what I mean by the maturity date. There was, a, there was a set time where God had to bring me out of my wilderness experience. Why? Because he spoke in my life. And because he's not a liar, his word had to come to pass. The enemy had to let me go. Glory to God. Yeah, the enemy had to let, let me go. Just like, hallelujah, the enemy had to let you go. We're talking about purpose and destiny. 
Glory to God. Free from slavery. Oh. Free from slavery. Just like right now, the enemy think he has a, has a hold on God's people. What we're going through and what we're experiencing in this world today, the enemy think he's, he got a hold on us. But he's a liar. It's a set time for God to bring us out. Do you believe that today? I believe it. With all my heart, mind, body, and soul, I believe and I trust God. All we have to do is continue to walk by faith and not by sight and lean on him. Lean not to your own understanding. All your ways acknowledge him. He'll direct your path. Glory to God. He's directing our path right now. What we can't see, God is already, has already allowed it to come to pass. We just have to walk into it, just like our purpose and destiny. Glory to God. Free from slavery. Glory to God. Or captivity. By paying a ransom. Mm, mm, mm. God is good. His mercy is everlasting. And his truth endured to all generations. Glory to God. Just like God brought the, the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. Glory to God. He's going to bring us out. This is considered Egypt. We, we, we're going through a wilderness experience right now as a body of Christ. As, as, as citizens here on earth. Glory to God. And remember, we're, we're, we're in this world, but we're not of this world. We have to have a mind, a kingdom mindset. But as we live here, glory to God, we got to know who's on our side. Glory to God. And lastly, fulfill or carry out. God knew that I had to carry out some things. So he had to redeem me. When it was time, I came through as pure and gold. Hallelujah. I, I, I boast in, in God Almighty. I, doesn't, I, I don't boast in the things that I've done or what I'm even doing right now because if it, if it had not been for the Lord on my side, I don't know where I'll be. So I can only boast in the, in the spirit of God. Glory to God. Because he did it. And let the redeem of the Lord say so. Glory to God. Now let me ask you. Let me just ask you, do you see yourself in one of these stages? Now, if you don't see yourself now, I guarantee a test is coming. A trial is coming. Temptation is coming. Glory to God. And remember that I, I, I mentioned to you a little a while ago about you have to prepare to win when you enter a fight. Yes, I hear you, God. The race is not given to the swift or the strong. But it's given to the one who will endure to the end. God wants us to endure. So when that, when, that, when that test and that trial come, remember. Remember what I shared with you today. God already brought you out. You just got to go through that thing. Glory to God. Hallelujah. If, if you see yourself, just have, uh, if, you, if, you, if you so, uh, receive your, if you see yourself, that's what I'm trying to say. Let me get it together. Just have been redeemed uh, for, for your confession and you're on your way. Basically is what I'm saying. Understand me. Remember, if you confess it, you already are redeemed. If you confess your false your sin to God, you've already been redeemed. I asked you a question. Do you, do you see yourself in those stages? Do you see yourself bound? Do, do you see yourself, you know, in slavery or in captivity? Do you see yourself in that? Do you see yourself in error, in sin? Yes. If you do, remember, if you confess it, I have to repeat it. If you confess it, because I don't want you to misunderstand this. If you confess it, you have already been redeemed. And then you can say so. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Perhaps if you do not see yourself, your day and time is coming. Remember, I just shared that with you. Your day and your time is coming. No matter the sin or weakness. I, I remember what Paul said, and I'm, I'm reminded of that. Paul said in, his, in the word of God that he boasts not, but only in his weaknesses. Because when we're weak, God makes us strong. How can you become strong if you have never been weak? 
And a lot of us think we just strong. I thought I thought I was strong. In my wilderness experience, I say, oh no, I'm good. I, no, that can't happen to me, God. And God said, wait a minute. Let me show you something before I get you to the other side. He always had the other side for me, but he had to, he had to, he had to make me out of a lie. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And that he did. And yes, I'm grateful for that. He showed me, you know, where I was in error. He showed me where I was weak so he can bring strength. And therefore, I'll be able to walk in my destiny and purpose. And again, that, that's, that's the whole reason that I'll, I'll have to write the book. God told me to share it. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And please be advised today to walk in the spirit. And I share that with you so you won't fulfill the lust of the flesh. Anything that your flesh want and God don't want for you, that's what he's talking about. Any lust of it. Anything that you, that you have a passion for and God hasn't given you that passion and God have not get, given you that desire, then th that's, that's what I'm talking about, the lust of the flesh. God gives us a desire to want to do right. God gives us the desire based upon what is connected to our purpose and connected to our destiny. That's what I'm saying. If it's not, if it's not the will of God, glory to God, for you to do this or for you to do that, how many of you know it, it, you, you won't do it? You won't do it. You, you might walk in that yourself, but it won't be of God. Hallelujah. Now the scripture says, and this, uh, this I say then, walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the, fe the flesh. That's Galatians 5 and 16. Read that. You can also read Galatians 5 and 25 and Romans 8 verse 1 and 4. And walking in the spirit also reminds me of Sarah command to Abraham when she told him to cast out the bond woman and her son, which God granted. This is just an example on how we can be led astray by our flesh. God had already told me to wait in my wilderness experience, right? So I said, wow, God, you, you, you know, you, you really taking a long time to, 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 to give me, you know, what, what, what I think I need at this time. So I'm just going to go ahead and do it myself. That's what happened. Glory to God with Abraham and Sarah. The scripture says, um, and that's in Genesis 21, 10 and 12. I have to share this with you. Okay. When, 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 um, um, I'm just going to read it. Okay. Wherefore she said unto Abraham, talking about Sarah, cast out this bond woman and her son for the son of this bond woman shall not be Herod with my son. Stay with me. Even with Isaac. And the thing was very, uh, was uh, grievous in Abraham's sight because of his son. Now, a, lo a lot of you may not know what I'm referring to, but if you go to Genesis 21, 10 through 12, you'll read all about the story. God promised Abraham and, and, and Sarah a child, but it took, I believe the word of God says 25 years for it to come to pass. So what am I saying? If you ask God to do something, if you pray before him, asking him to move on your behalf for something, and it seemed like nothing, you know, is taking place as though, you know, what happened in my wilderness experience, you know, God is, God is coming. He, 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 he's on his way to doing that, but he needs you to trust him. He needs you to, to continue the race, be steadfast and, unmo and unmovable and always abounding in his work. Some, some of us, we have to get busy. We have to get busy in the things of God. Because why? If we're not busy in the things that God has called us to do, then, then we, we can be distracted. We can go, you know, into a whole nother path, you know, that, that God didn't prepare for us. Why? Because we idle. Have you ever been idle? Nothing to do. And you find yourself getting a lot of stuff. <laughs> See, won't nobody want to tell the truth, but see, I'm going to just tell the truth because God has delivered me and he set me free. So because I'm free, I, I can talk about it. Yeah, I can talk about that thing. So 
That's what happened to Sarah and, and, and Abraham. They were, they were, uh, they lost faith in that thing. So what happened? They began to move out, you know, before God. Okay. So I'll continue to read here because I don't, I don't want to lose you. Okay. So again, this is Genesis 21, 10 through 12. So it was kind of grievous for Abraham to let the, the bond woman go because of the lad. Okay, the son that he had with the, the, the bond woman. And because thy bond woman and all that Sarah uh, had said unto thee. Sarah, remember, told her husband to get rid of the, the bond woman because she was stirring up trouble in the household. After they went out and, and, and when Sarah told Abraham to go ahead and sleep with, you know, the bond woman, the maid. You know, somebody that was, you know, helping around the house. Okay? I I'll make it real simple. S Sarah told uh, Abraham to go ahead and to her and have this child because God was taking too long to bring forth that child. So, it, that stirred up um, conflict in the house. And that's what happened to us. When we go ahead of God and we go against God, you know, the, you know, a go, a go against his lead and his command, that starts up conflict. That starts up confusion. Something that we, if we had to just listen to him, glory to God, we could have prevented ourselves from going through that. Amen. So again, let me speed this process up. I believe the real reason Sarah request was grievous to Abraham was because he desired to keep the bond woman, which he was bond to. You really got to get this book because remember these, this is just snippets that I'm sharing with you, but you got to get this entire book so you can read glory to God about, uh, Abraham, Sarah and the bond woman. So what does that relate to in my wilderness experience? Remember, I went ahead of God. I lost faith in some things. Glory to God. So I took upon, uh, you know, I went forth ahead of him and I took it upon myself to make some stuff happen. And how, how many of us tried to make some stuff happen and then turn around and it didn't work? So that's what I'm saying. Abraham and, 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 and Sarah's plan, it did not work. It causes chaos, chaos and confusion in the household. And, and Abraham, after Sarah got tired of the bond woman, after she uh, wanted to put her out, after she brought her into the house, basically, and, and, and told her to see with her husband. Oh, now you want to get rid of her. And that's what I'm saying. When we go ahead of God, when we do the things that God didn't command us to do. Then we want to say, oh, you know, God, I, I should have listened, you know, from the beginning. Yes, that's what we do. But God want us to, to, to just be obedient when he speak. Glory to God. And the reason why uh, Abraham didn't want to let her go, because why? I, I, be, I just believe that he was, in, he was enjoying it. Just like we enjoy the things that is good to our flesh. That's my point. You got to follow me when I'm talking here. That's, that's how we enjoy the things that's to our flesh. That's why Abraham didn't want to let her go. The same reason some of us desire to fulfill the pleasures of, of the flesh over the obedience of God. That's it. Some of us, and I was in that situation. Yes, I was in that situation. Fulfill the pleasures of my flesh over the obedience of God. So I'm trying to make it as plain as possible for us. We cannot enjoy the pleasures of our flesh no matter what it is. But we must be obedient to the call of God. Remember, go to lulu.com. Get this book so you, you can follow real close on what God is trying to tell you. Glory to God. And this is the reason we fail, we fail him and abhor our purpose in life. Remember, if God didn't help me in my wilderness experience, I don't believe that I would be in the position that I am now where I'm able to share Glory to God and be a witness to what he's done and what he brought me through. 
Mm -mm -mm. All God wanted Abraham to do was to trust him in birthing the promise. And Abraham was led by his flesh and created chaos and confusion that delayed the promise. That's it. That's what I'm sharing with you today. I, 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 it, at that moment in my wilderness experience, I delayed the promise of God. Hallelujah. <laughs> but when I gave God a yes, and when I surrendered it all, he began to show me my purpose and my destiny. He began to show me the role that I was supposed to be on from the beginning. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So what he's done, remember I was talking about regaining you know, God giving back to you what the caterpillar, the locust, and the canker worm have eaten up. That's what he did to me. Hallelujah. He gave me back my peace. Hallelujah. He gave me back my strength, wisdom, knowledge, my hearing, and my sight. He gave it all back. God is telling some of us, glory to God, be not deceived. Glory to God. Hallelujah. God is not marked. Whatever you sow You'll reap that. So again, there's consequences to sin. Okay? This is the same thing that I did as I'm sharing with you today. I delayed the promise of God in my own life. And I couldn't put the blame on nobody else. You know how we've ever caught ourselves in a situation and say, you know what? They made me do it. I did it because, you know, they they, they made me mad and, 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 and I just was responding to it. No. Hmm. You have to be accountable for your own wrongdoing. Yes, and I have to be accountable for my own wrongdoing. Yes, I had to be accountable for that. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Now, you know, sometimes we find ourselves in situations that could have been avoided and blame someone else. But that's what I just stated. We ought to blame ourselves. But the good thing about this is God is faithful and just to forgive you of your sin. Only if you confess. The redemption process only comes through your confession. If you never confess your faults and your sins to God, God cannot redeem you. Glory to God. He, he, he cannot free you from sin. That's why we got to repent. Repent today. Re -re repent of your sins. Your wrongdoing today. I say all the time, today is the day of salvation. Not tomorrow, but today. God want to use you for his glory. So therefore, you must repent. Repent. Be godly sorrow and never return again. Hallelujah. Now, the lesson in this is knowing whatever is born of the flesh is temporary. Which doesn't last. And that's the deception. That's, that's where the deception comes from. The enemy allow, you know, he, he'll, he'll lead us into situations and circumstances thinking that we got some good coming. But remember the fall of man from the beginning of the, of the, of the, um, the beginning of, um, of the word of God in Genesis. The fall of Adam and Eve when they, when they bidden of the forbidden fruit. The enemy told Eve that you would not surely die after that. God had already gave them the word not to eat of the tree that was in the garden. But she, she, she took out her precious time to listen to the enemy. And that's what I want to say. We, we, we can't, we can't hear what the enemy is saying. We, we, we can't have a conversation with the enemy because why that open up doors for weaknesses. You know, that open up doors for us to be led astray. Glory to God. Hallelujah. But it, 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 sin, when you, when you go and be led into sin, it's just a temporary fix. But it don't last. Glory to God. And another lesson is knowing whatever is born of the Spirit lasts forever. That's why I said for some of us, if you haven't received Christ as your personal Savior, do it today. Be, be set free today. And, he, and he'll begin to reveal to you your purpose and destiny. And you will live life eternal. And what I'm saying is this. The next time you are tempted to disobey the leading of the Holy Ghost. That's the spirit of God. Think about the, the, uh, the major consequences you can face. And lose sight on the promises of God. Don't forget. God's been good to us. Glory to God. 
God has brought some of us out of some stuff. Don't nobody probably know it, but you and God know. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Because why? His eyes is in every place beholding the good and the evil. Glory to God. He knows. What don't nobody else know, God see you and he know you. Glory to God. You know, I think about that movie where it said, I know what you did last summer. God said, yeah, I know what you did. But there's hope. There's hope. Don't forget it. It's hope. Glory to God. Hallelujah. The scripture said, but they that wait upon the Lord, and I mentioned this before, if I'm not mistaken, shall renew their strength. And if I did not mention, I'm mentioning it to you now. They shall mind up with, in, with uh, wings as eagles. They shall run, not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. That's Isaiah, the 40th chapter. Glory to God. Isaiah, the 40th chapter. Glory to God. You shall run, not be, and not uh, faint. Glory to God. You shall walk and not be weary. Some of us has been, have been weary in our spirits lately. Some of us, glory to God, have a spirit that you, that you want to faint. Because things are not looking the way that you want them to look. Glory to God. But remember, God still is sitting on the throne. And he's waiting on you to surrender. He's waiting on you to confess your sin to him. Glory to God so he can move on your behalf. That's all God was waiting on me to do. Remember, this redemption, this, uh, this is about me, Minister Chandra Brundage. God told me to write this, to share with you. To let you know that he's more than able to do exceedingly abundantly. Above all that you can ever ask or think according to the power that rests within you. Hallelujah. So again, we're praying for increase in faith. So God can help your unbelief. To know that he can bring you out of any situation and circumstance. No matter what it is. So don't faint. Don't be weary in well doing. The Bible says you'll reap if you faint not. And if I can share it with you, some of us can't handle the truth. Glory to God. Some of us, glory to God, don't like hearing the truth sometimes. We won't admit it though. But I'm telling you the truth today. I fainted. I got weary. Glory to God. In my well doing. Glory to God. But when I gave God a yes to my next. Hallelujah. He came in and he restored me. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And he began to allow me to regain access to my purpose and my destiny. Glory to God. So some of us, if, if you feel distracted in ways, if you feel like, like you, can't, you can't see at the end of the tunnel, remember Isaiah 40, a chapter said, wait on him without being weary and without fainting. Glory to God. Redemption only comes to, to those that wait. My God, redemption only comes to those that wait. Remember, I shared with you, God told me to wait <laughs> in my wilderness experience. Glory to God. But, but, but I had got impatient because I was waiting a long time. Don't give up on God. God allowed me to, to share this with you. Hallelujah. Because based upon experience, I know what it is to not trust him. I know, glory to God, what the circumstances in the situation can be by disobeying his voice. I know it firsthand. But you don't have to go through that. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Just like Christ died on the cross for us to have life eternal. We don't have to die in our sin. The wages of sin is death, the word of God said, but the gift of God is eternal life. Glory to God. We don't, we don't have to, this, this is not the end for us. Even if, if I can mention current state, this pandemic and this, this world tragedy that we're going through, it's not over yet. It's not over. And you ought to say, it's not over for me. When the enemy, glory to God, whisper in your ear and say, it ain't going to happen. You, you, you can't do that. You might as well give up. You tell him to his faith. You are a liar. The Bible talks about the enemy is a liar. He's the father of lies. And there's no truth in him. Every time he speaks, he speaks of a lie. 
But God is true. The word of God said also, let God be true and let every man a lie. Hallelujah. John talks about as well. John, John 14 chapter. Right about the sixth verse. He said, I am the way. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man can come to me, Jesus said, unless they go through the Father. Hallelujah. So redemption only comes to those who wait. Wait on him. Wait on him. And in due time, he'll bring you out. And my prayer is that you believe God for who he is. Not so much of what he can do. A lot of times we have a prayer like, like, like a Christmas list. I want this for Christmas. I want that for Christmas. And God, and remember, I want this. And then turn around and, and don't forget this, God. And all God is looking for us to be obedient to his ways, his will, his statutes, his judgments, his commandments. Glory to God. The Bible talks about keeping his commandments is life to our neighbor. Being obedient to him, it brings us life. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So again, I pray that you believe God for who he is and know everything works together for the good of those who love him and that we're called to his purpose and glory. Some of us think that we don't have a purpose on this earth. And why did I say that? Because we're not walking in it. We're not seeking his face. We're not asking him, God, why am I here? You know, what, what, what do you have for me to do? Glory to God. He said everything works together for the good of those who love him. Remember, we have to obey him. That's love. Jesus said it again, and I'm going to continue to share that. Jesus said it. He said, you call me Lord, Lord, and you do not the things that I call you to do. We say we love him. We, we, we say we trust him. But we disobedient. Only I believe in my heart. And some of you women and men of God online. And I'm so grateful that you're chiming in with me today. God bless you. The blessings of the Lord make it rich and add no sorrow to you. I'm, I'm grateful for your time. But I know that you can be a witness also. Glory to God. That as I'm mentioning uh, your, your purpose and your destiny. You know, if you had not been obedient to God, you know, telling you, you know, what to do, how to do it, you might not be in the position that you're in right now either. Glory to God. So I know I have more than one witness on this line today. I know I'm not alone. Glory to God. Hallelujah. There is a purpose and, 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 and destiny for us. Glory to God. And no. And now I say, go and let the glory of the Lord rise in you. Glory to God. If you go to Isaiah, the 60th chapter in verse one, it talks about arise. Hallelujah. And that's what we need to do. Arise. Get up. Do what God called you to do. Do what God has purpose for you to do. Be a witness and let the redeemer of the Lord say so. If God redeem you from something, some of you right now ought to say, and just, just type in, I've been redeemed. If, if, if you're not ashamed, say it, I've been redeemed. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And a lot of people that we might come across in our life, they figure, you know what? It, 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 it's too late for me. You know, I'm, I'm, in, I'm in sin so deep. I, I, I don't believe that God, you know, you know, is able to do it for me. And that's where we have to come in. And we have to let them know. God is more than able. Glory to God, more than able. Hallelujah. So I'm going to stop right there. Glory to God. And remember, if you have not, glory to God, purchased this book, please go to lulu.com, L-U-L-U.com. You can also go to amazon.com as well as barnesandnoble.com. Glory to God. So you can just read more into that testimony that I shared with you over the past, you know, three, you know, three, you know, four weeks, you know, and, and if you don't think that it relates to you, share that, share that book, get, get it for somebody else. Glory to God. But remember, God wanted yes to your next, next. 
It's not over. We, we, some of us have been walking with God for a long time. Some of us has been believers a long time. Glory to God. But there is another level that God want to bring you to. There is another level that God want to take me to. And I got to give him another yes. A whole nother yes. As I always use for an example, we go from kindergarten to first grade, first grade to the second, until we get to junior high status. We go ahead and we enter into high school. And then before you know it, we didn't graduate from high school and we going into college. Same with the kingdom of God. There's another level. Hallelujah. And just what Paul said, he said, I'm, I'm not there yet. He said, I haven't comprehended it all. Hallelujah. There's more. And God want to give it to you. Glory to God. So just a little food for thought here. Man's choices are born in the desires of the flesh. Obedience is born in the desire of the spirit. Only God can help us to be obedient to his will. Only God can help us, can help us to be obedient in his way. His call. Only him. Because remember, God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. And the spirit man dwells in heaven. Glory to God. The government of God. Even while he lives on planet earth. <laughs> what am I saying? God wants us to enjoy some things right here on heaven. We don't have to wait till we get to heaven to enjoy the things of God. He wants us to give it to us right now. Hallelujah. <laughs> I thank God because I'm enjoying some things right now. I'm, I, am in the, I am walking in it now. I am enjoying his love, his peace, his blessings right now. Glory to God. But again, somebody ought to just say there's more. Glory to God. In John 11 chapter, in the 25th verse, Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. Glory to God. Live for life awaits you. Glory to God. Whatever you're going to do for Christ. I'm closing the book. Whatever you're going to do for Christ, do it now. This is Minister Chandra Brundage, glory to God, at Facebook Shine, at T-N-O-W-F, standing for the now factor. Once again, whatever you're going to do for Christ, do it now. I love you with the love of the Lord. Glory to God. And I'll be back with you, glory to God, soon, so we can get into uh, tapping to your core. That was the, the, the actual um, uh, third book that I've actually uh, wrote, tapping to your core. And if you want to get that, you can go to uh, lulu.com as well. L-U-L-U.com. -L -U so you can be ready and, and go through, you know, the book with me as I share the snippets for that book. Glory to God. That's talking about, you know, being aware of, of the spirit that lives within you at all times. Allowing the spirit of God to live through you at all times. Glory to God. I hear a lot of people say, well, God know we're human and this and that. Yes, but we're also divine. Glory to God. And we do have a choice to sin against God or to be obedient. But we want to be obedient. We, we want to make the choice to choose him today. Glory to God. So again, that's tapping to your core. And until next time, glory to God. Don't give up on God because God won't give up on you. I love you with the love of the Lord. Until next time, take care.